In this video, we're going to take a look at the Survive Outdoors Longer Fuel-Free Lighter and Flashlight. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this, keep watching. So shortly after Christmas, I made a video where I showed off all of the items that I received, both from my Christmas uh, gifts and for my birthday, which is also in December. And one of those items was this lighter. So uh, I've been testing it all winter long. You've been following my videos. You know, I've been starting pretty much every fire with this lighter. And I thought, well, uh, spring is about to come on. You can see I've got rid of the jacket, at least for today. That doesn't mean it will stay off. But uh, yeah, I think I've had it long enough now that I can give you some information on this lighter to help you decide whether or not you want to purchase one for yourself. So what I thought I would do is just bring the camera in a little closer. Uh, I'm going to go over the specifications very quickly because, of course, I'll put them in the video description below. But I have a whole pile of things that I want to demonstrate that this will light. And then we'll talk about some of the shortcomings of it because it's, it's not perfect by any means. All right, let me bring the camera in a little closer. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just give you a few close-ups as I go over the specifications for the SOL, standing for Survive Outdoors Longer, uh, fuel-free lighter and flashlight. And, uh, it, okay, right, now, right away, there's the flashlight. I'll talk about it in a second, but I don't consider this a flashlight. Maybe if I absolutely needed one, but yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. So let's do some specifications for this first. So it comes in at 1.9 ounces or 56 grams. It is 3.75 inches long or 9.3 centimeters, and it has a diameter of one inch exactly or 2.4 centimeters. It is charged with a USB type A charging port on the inside. Uh, there is no information on the battery itself. I'll tell you what's non-replaceable you can't get at the battery to replace it but I can give you an indication of how long it will run and I said an indication because the information that's available is a little sketchy it's a little on uh, it varies from where you see it site to site and I think there's a few variables you'll understand what I mean so what is the whole point of this lighter to start with so the idea is this is your primary lighter that you drop into your pocket to replace your Bic lighter and when you need it it's there or you can put it in your emergency be your bug out bag your get home bag, uh, your survival kit for the woods, whatever else you want to refer to it as. So it's an emergency lighter. I don't think I'd consider it my primary source of starting a fire. I think my three big lighters that I carry in my kit, my ferrocerium rod, <laughs> and whatever else I have, the matches, those are my primary sources. Having said that, this is what I've been using all winter, mostly to get a, a feel for how well it works, and it does work on a variety of things, but like I mentioned, there are a few shortcomings. By the way, right now, let's talk about this little piece of paracord. It is two millimeter paracord I believe and what's unique about it and the reason they include it I wouldn't use this as a lanyard around my neck I, I hang it off of the edge there the center core of this paracord is tinder in itself it's like a waxed material and I've taken out a piece I'm not going to do that today but I've taken out a piece you can just easily pull it separate from the rest of the paracord and it lights up and burns like a waxed piece of string. So it's nice to have that, but that's my last ditch if I can't find anything else to light. So it is waterproof. There is no waterproof rating on it, but I will tell you that where the light, and the light will come off, although it doesn't expose the battery, it just exposes the LED, but you can see that there is an O-ring to maintain waterproofness of it. And the same thing for the top of the lighter there is an o-ring around there so i can say because i've dropped it in the snow no i haven't dunked it into water and held it there for an hour to see if it'll resist water getting in that way but it have dropped it in the snow and it's been wet and it hasn't uh, gotten inside and it still work right away here's one of the cons it will not work if it's frozen and uh, you know i don't suppose that's such a surprise. Your Bic lighter won't work when it's frozen. Your Bic lighter won't work when it's wet. So consider this like your Bic lighter. Keep it somewhere dry, like in your pocket. Body warmth is all it needs. It doesn't have to be hot. But I did put it in my freezer at home because that was even uh, more consistently cold than laying it in the snow. And I left it there for about four or five hours, took it out. It would spark. It just wouldn't spark hot enough to ignite anything. Now, after about five minutes in my hands, warmed up, and then it was good to go again. So how does this thing operate? It has a little safety latch on it just to keep it shut from accidental opening. And then you press this center button, 
and you can see that there are four points of contact where the beam will arch across and to ignite the beam there's a little on off switch that's all there is to it hopefully that's showing up if I can bring it in close enough you should be able to see the arcing happening okay now what will it light? Well, I've found that it will light just about anything. Now, if you look at it and say, I can light it with my Bic lighter, there's a good chance I can light it with this, with one exception. And that is, well, and somebody asked this in one of my videos, will it light a transient alcohol stove? And the answer is yes and no. It won't light it directly because, well, if you could imagine getting this down inside so that you're close enough to the fuel in order to hit the button. If you can do that and not worry about your fingers getting burnt, then yes, it will light it. Uh, the way I use it to light my transit is I have I carry a little piece of string that I dip in the alcohol and, and then light that, dip it back into the lighter, light it and extinguish the piece of string. That's how I use this for lighting my transient. All right, let's uh, pull a few things out of my kit here and start doing some demonstrations. So lit literally, literally right off of the ground, right here next to me, piece of birch bark. A little poor piece of birch bark, but I think it'll still work for this demonstration. So like all fuels, if you want your ferrocerium rod to work with birch bark, you try to get as fine a surface area as possible. Uh, I think that, boy, this is just crumbly birch bark. I think it'll still work though. And uh, yeah, so you need to get it pretty fine. It, don't try to, you know, light a log or anything else. So try to put the birch bark down between those four points of contact and it lights up pretty quickly. All right, so there's the birch bark. So what else might we have in our kit that we want to light? Well, how about a little piece of jute string? Now, I could work this even finer to get it so fine that it works well in a bird's nest, but um, it, this works well as it is. Let's demonstrate that. And, and you can see how quickly that lit up. All right, I've got a little place here. I'm putting everything that I light up. Uh, what else can I like? Oh, by the way, this is the piece of string that I would use. Now, I'm not even going to dip this in alcohol, and I'll show you that it will light up anyway. So all I have to do is get it in there, and you can see it lights up even with the, el the alcohol on the end of it. What else have I got in my kit? Well, okay, here's a fire starter. This is one of those ProCamp Tech uh, fire plugs, fire starters work it to get the fine fibers demonstrate or exposed like that let's just use a little piece of it. there's no sense using the whole piece for this get the fine fibers exposed and womp whoo that lit up quick all right now what else have i got in here some of the things i'm going to have to lay on top of a piece of metal or something just so i don't burn myself okay here's one let's try this out You've got some UCO matches, or any matches for that matter, and for some reason you've lost your striker because they're not the strike anywhere like you can put on a rock or any other uh, rough surface. But now you need, you want to use these, and I like these UCO matches because for the extended burn time. Will it light with one of these? Even see, and okay, I guess the first question is, why would you light a match with a lighter? Well, like I mentioned, what if you've lost your striker for this? And I'm trying to use this as minimally as possible. So rather than sticking this into a pile of material trying to get it lit, how about I light this momentarily and stick this in? So will this work? Uh, of course it does. We'll put that aside. There's no putting that out. That has to go into the ground. There's no putting these things out. You know that, right? Okay, so that will work. What else have we got here? Uh, okay, most people carry these. I carry these. These are cheap. They're free for all intents and purposes. And that is a, a cotton ball with a little bit of Vaseline on it. Now, the trick to using these things, of course, is don't over soak them. There's no need to. It's not meant for that. Uh, to get it to light with anything, ferrocerium rod or anything else, that is to tease away some fibers messy stuff to work with. That's the only downside to cotton balls and Vaseline is to tease away some fibers and whoa look at that. That was hard to put out as well. Now here's another one. This may take a little work to get it ready but I think this is one of those commercial fire starters that I buy at the dollar stores. They appear in quite a few of my videos because they're cheap. I don't like the smell of them <laughs> but they're cheap and they're effective. And I would expect this to light up, but let's just expose some fibers again. Of course, now I have a breeze going. Can I cover it from the breeze? 
there. That's better. Put that down. What else do I have here? Okay, here's one you wouldn't normally think of. What if you have some char cloth and no way of striking it with a anything? You know, you've lost your flint and steel, you don't have a flint and steel, or maybe you didn't bring char cloth with you, but you were able to make some with a piece of cotton or other organic material. And, uh, you know, uh, quite often I'll, I'll use this obviously with a flint and steel and I'll use it with solar ignition and today is probably a day I could get away with it. Yesterday not so much but today pretty good. Uh, will this light up? I would expect it to. Again why would I do that? Because I didn't have anything else to use and you can see it lit up. Hopefully it's going to show. So you can see that the char cloth lights up and I expected that it would do that. What else do I have in here? I've got a couple pieces of things that I'm going to have to... Oh, here's one I can use before I change the uh, position here. So this is my uh, Uberlieben tender wick and bellows. Uh, you can see it's getting kind of short. I do have spare uh, waxed material to use. And again, this is nice to use and I, I usually use it with a ferrocerium rod because uh, that's kind of what they're intended for. But the beauty of these items is that you can light this, put this into your tinder and leave it there for an extended period of time. It's like a, a long burning match is the best way to look at it. And again, the whole idea of using, using a lighter to light it is to save fuel. That is going, isn't it? Oh, went out. All right. And the trick with these is to get your fibers as fine as possible. The more exposed fibers, the easier it will be to light. Now let's try this properly. That's better. Now I can stick that in my Tinder bundle or my uh, underneath my Tinder and get it going. When I'm finished, put it out, pull it back and it's ready for the next time I need it. Okay, I do have a couple more items here. Let's see if I can get set up to show you this. Okay, this is, like I mentioned, meant to be a, an emergency lighter, something you'd put in your survival kit, bug out bag, whatever it is. Um, maybe you don't have a whole lot of tinder. It's not, it's quite damp in the forest. You can't find birch bark or other combustible things like that but maybe you have a little bit of hand sanitizer. Will this work with hand sanitizer? Well, what I'm gonna do is just pour a little bit on the back of this metal case. And it's all about getting the contacts down low enough. Let's, hopefully this will demonstrate. Now, how am I gonna show this in bright sunlight? I'll light a piece of birch bark off of it. So that is going. I don't know how I'm gonna demonstrate that. On birch bark light up. Show people that the there. So that alcohol is burning on that. And I'll just lay that down and burn itself out. All right, I have one more thing that is likely to be something you'll find in the woods if you know where to look. Fatwood. So this is a piece of fat wood I harvested off of a log out in the woods. You can see there's some, it's not all high quality, but there is some high quality fat wood in there. A couple of different ways I can do it. Again, you've got to get fine fibers exposed. So you could scrape with the back of your knife or the edge of your knife. It's not going to hurt the edge of your knife and create a what's often known as Maya dust, which is just powdered fatwood. Or you can just make some little bitty curls and add them to a pile of curls. That should be enough to at least, maybe I'll make it a little longer so I don't burn my fingers. Uh, that was a better idea. All right, that should light. I just wanted to make it a little longer so I didn't burn my fingers when I did this. So fatwood, will this light fatwood? And the answer is, oh, of course, yeah, fatwood. Good piece of fatwood, just about anything will light it, I think. Okay, I have one more item I want to demonstrate. It'll take me a second to set it up because, again, I have to have something to put it on. Esbitab. Can you do this with an Esbitab? So I have not tried this, but uh, 
it's good to know. Will it light up an Espitab? Let me give it, give me a second to open this up and we'll try it out. All right, so the trick to getting an Esbet tab to light is to try it again to expose, you know, make it a little bit powdery. Um, you can hold a match right to them. I just find if you just kind of grind it down a little bit, it doesn't take very much. Like that, you can see the powder that I have there. It makes it a lot easier, and this is true for whatever you're using to light these things up. Let's see. Again, Esbit can be heard to see in the out here as well. I can't. Oh, it is going. Oh, went out. One of those things that can be hard to see whether or not it's going. So I don't think this would be my first choice for lighting Esbit up, but it is going to work. Can you see the flames on that? I'm not sure. I can feel them, so they're there. Hard to see in the light, right? Okay, I think I've gone through all the things that I wanted to demonstrate. Let's uh, close this up with a few thoughts. All right, a few more comments on the Survive Outdoors fuel-free lighter and flashlight. A couple things I didn't mention. I, I did mention that I wanted to comment on the flashlight itself. It does have a flashlight. It has a low, high, and strobe setting easy enough to access with the exposed end or the contact points closed. If you use the on-off switch, it'll work the flashlight. You're not going to see it here in the daylight. It will run three hours on low. I think I'd sooner save it for fires and have a real flashlight with me. But I guess if I had nothing else, then if I have nothing else, I was poorly planned, wasn't I? So yeah, I guess it's there if you need it, but I wouldn't count on it or use it as a flashlight. Save it for lighting fires. That's my thoughts on it as well. How many lights can I get off of one full charge? Well, to start with, it takes about two hours from a dead battery to fully charge it. And uh, I use it all winter about 30 fires I lit. Now, different sources have different numbers as far as how many fires. Amazon says it'll light 100 fires. The Survive Outdoor Longer site says it'll light about 45 fires. Uh, I'll tell you this, the longer you have the button pressed in order to get whatever it is you're trying to light, the shorter the battery life. Does that make sense? So I wouldn't look at this in terms of I can get 30 lights or 40 lights or 50 or 100 lights of fires with it before I have to recharge it. I would say every couple of months, recharge it. I don't know what the battery life would be without being used, if it would drain at all. I don't have any reason to think. I mean, like I said, I got 25, 30 fires lit without charging it. But uh, yeah, I just charged it up last night for this demonstration uh, before coming out today. Um, am I glad I have it? Would I have purchased it myself? It would have been something I may have purchased myself had I been in one of those moments I've got a few dollars in my pocket. It's right there. I say, yeah, maybe I'll buy that. Um, would, am I glad it was given to me as a gift? Oh, yeah, it's fun. It is fun. It is not necessary. It doesn't do anything better than a Bic lighter, but it does work. And the, it, like I said, you can get 30, 40 fuel or lighter, lights out of it. Yeah, I guess you can compare it to your Bic lighter is probably the best way to look at this is something like a Bic lighter. And uh, it, to call it fuel free isn't exactly true either because it does have to be recharged when it does run out. I guess the nice thing there is you, well, absolutely during the winter, I carry power banks with me, uh, mostly for the camera as well as my flashlights and my phone. So having a power bank means I can recharge this. Uh, I could solar recharge this as well. That'd be another way of recharging it. But, uh, you know, it's easy to recharge at home and then it's always topped up. Okay, that's just my thoughts on it. If you have one of these and you have a few comments that you'd like to make, by all means, please do. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer them. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.